Okay, dear students, now we are going to take the observations. Because, again, keep this point in your mind, we are practically verifying the conditions of the equilibrium. So, for this purpose, now we are taking an external mass. Say this is capital W. Its mass is 100 grams. So, for simplicity, this weight, the weight of this body is taken to be 100 gram weight. We will place this weight with the help of this loop. So we will remove. And we will place this external weight on this meter rod. And again, we will place this loop at the same position we are placing this weight that is capital W at the center of the gravity of this you can see again by adding a weight at the center of the gravity of this meter rod the readings of the pointers changed. It means downward force is increasing, so automatically the upward force will also increase. In order to again check the balance of this meter rod from both sides, again we take the help of this meter rod and uh, note down the horizontal position at this position at this point this point and similarly from this point so the heights are equal from both sides So we are balancing it. This point is very important that uh, in order to verify, to prove the conditions of equilibrium, the meter rod must be balanced from both sides. So according to our observation and calculations, now we are using some names for the positions of three forces which are acting on this meter rod. I say it's three forces. What are these three forces? One is at point A, second is at point B, third force is at the center of the current. If this meter rod is balanced, it means using you your first condition, the sum of all these forces, it must be zero. And for this purpose, the starting position, one end of this meter rod, means the starting position of this meter rod is taken as the point of the axis. So from this point, this is taken to the point of axis C. So C to A will be the moment arm of this force P which is upward. C to this point G, G is mean center of gravity. This is known as the moment arm of this force which is downward. And similarly from C to B, this point is a B is supposed to be B. This distance will be equal to the moment arm of the force Q. So we will now note the values of the forces and the moment arm. So first we will take the reading of the force P on spring balance S1 and the position of the pointer on S1 shows that the force is acting at point A it is equal to 110 gram weight. Similarly, the value of the force which is acting at this position upward, the pointer or scale of spring balance as to shows it is at 120 gram weight. Third one is the force is downward as we have measured it's mentioned this force is 100 gram weight is acting at the center of the gravity of this meter rod. 
Now we will take, we will measure the moment's arm. And you know that by definition, what is the moment arm? It is a distance between the point of pivot and the point of the action of the force. So diagrammatically, practically, this point is a point of pivot. So from this to this position, it is 22 centimeter. 22 centimeter is the moment arm of the force P. From this to center of gravity, it is 50.1 centimeter. C to G. That is the moment arm of this force. And similarly, from this point, the point P is at 80 centimeter. This is the moment arm of this force Q. So this force will produce a counterclockwise torque. Similarly, this force Q will produce a counterclockwise torque. Whereas this W, weight of the meter rod, plus this external weight, this force F will produce a clockwise torque. So theoretically, the sum of these two, three torques, it must be equal to zero. But when we are observing, when we are performing an experiment in our lab, so there are some limitations. What are the limitations? It means the calibrations of the spring balance, the density or you can say the mass of this meter arc, it may be non-uniform. Similarly, there are some sources of errors which are present in our practicals. We want to just verify the answer is nearly equal to zero. It cannot be equal to zero practically. Again, the reason is because the sources of errors are always present in the practical. So now you will take the readings, what is P, what is Q, moment arm of the force P, moment arm of the force Q, moment arm of this weight W which is F, what is F? F is basically the sum of two forces. One is the weight of this meter rod and the second one is that weight which you are hanging at the center of the craft. So you will take these reading, you enter again, you will take the help of your table by putting the values of P, Q, F, C to A, C to B, C to G and then by multiplication mean torque 1 is basically equal to P into C into A, it is counterclockwise torque, what is torque 2, it is the product of this force P into C into B distance and what is torque 3 it is equal to the product of force, what is F, again this point is very important as given in your table, in your copy, this force F is equal to the weight of this meter rod plus this external weight which is we are taking in ground weight. So by using your tables, multiplication and calculation for your first observation, you can check your answer, is it nearly equal to zero or not. If your answer is comes out to be zero in this way by performance, by exactly balancing, by removing the zero error in your spring balance, you can see that your answer is nearly equal to zero. If it is not comes out to be zero, it means either you are ignoring the zero errors which are present in your spring balances or your meter rod is not balanced with respect to your horizontal table. I am taking just only first observation. Similarly, you will just replace or add some weight at this position. You will take 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 readings and uh, in each reading your answer means your verification is sum of all torques is must be nearly equal to zero within the limits of your experimental pattern. So our position of the center of gravity of the meter was 50.1 cm. When we did the balance of our meter rod without an external weight, the weight of the meter rod was approximately 40 gram weight. For measurement of the torque, we need the axis of rotation, meaning one end of the meter rod that point is C, which is starting that is 0 0.00 cm. In order to verify the condition of the equilibrium, we need three observations. So I am taking just only one observation for your convenience. So this table represents the amount of the forces which is acting on this meter rod, momentum and torque about the center of the gravity. The last column represents mathematically sum of torque, means measure of the torque which is acting on this meter rod. 
So our first force was 30 ground weight, which is P acting on S1. Our second force was again 30 ground weight, which is acting on spring balance S2. This F is very important, this part is very important because this force is equal to W plus W. This is a capital W, this small W. What is capital W? The external weight. And the small W is the weight of the meter of So 20 plus 40, this 40 will remain the same. We are just increasing this external weight at the center of the gravity. For our convenience, again, we are measuring the momentum of the force P, which is 30.2 cm. The momentum of the force Q from axis of rotation, that is 66.8 cm. And the moment arm of the force is acting at the center of gravity, it is 50.1 cm. So, torque about G, two torques are counterclockwise, mean anticlockwise, and one torque is a clockwise. Counterclockwise torque again is equal to P into CA. T1, T2, T3, these are three torques and they are represented in the diagram. So, torque 1 is a counterclockwise, which is equal to the amount of force P into its momentum is CA so ground weight centimeter will be the units of this torque T1 so what is P that is 30 ground weight CA is the momentum of this force after balancing that is 35.2 cm similarly a counterclockwise torque R2 it is equal to again 30 into 66.8 this 66.8 is the moment arm of the second force is acting at spring balance S2. Torque 3 is again equal to 60. What is 60? It is sum of two weights. One is the weight of the meter rod and second is the external weight. So 60 into 50.1 is the position of the center of the gravity. So sum of these two torques must be equal to this torque or you can say by summation like this one it has written in the equation that sigma torque is equal to torque 1 plus torque 2 minus torque 3. These two torques are anticlockwise, this torque is clockwise so their sum is nearly equal to 0. It is our first observation. In our second and third observation we will just increase this capital W. We can keep CA, CB, CG as constant. We can also change the positions of this pointer. Pointers mean the positions of these loops because mathematically simply torque is the product of force into moments arm. So any one parameter change will produce a change in the result. So just in our second and third observation, we will increase just W at the center of the gravity and we can check what is your answer. So at the end, which is verification, what is the verification? So in our experiment, we are verifying the sum of all torque, it must be equal to zero. So within the limits of your experimental error, because I have already said, the source of our errors are always present in our practical their sum is nearly equal to zero. This is our whole expect. You can take this book, Objective Physics Practicals, from Ilmi Book Depot, Urdu Bazaar, Lahore. Your readings may be different from these readings. Check these readings as a reference. Thank you.